the war between Israel and Hamas has left thousands dead and many more injured. And joining us at the print today is Gadali Afendel. He's a doctor. He's doing relief work in the southern half of Israel. And thank you for joining us so much, Gadali. This is a difficult hour. I know you're very busy. I can see supplies behind you. I know that you're in the middle of a lot. But can you just start by describing to our viewers as to what the current situation is over there? You were mentioning to us that there was some bombing happening over there. Yeah, right now, as we're talking, there's bombing all the time. Um, but as you see, I'm sitting here talking. I'm used to it. Nobody could really get used to it. It's still something that really bothers. It's very scary, uh, very uh, frightening to walk in, the, you know, in my own garden, in, to, to go to sleep at night. The stories, the pictures, the, the scenes I saw when I was out there trying to give medical care to people, the injured and uh, unfortunately dead soldiers and citizens that came out it's stuff I'll for sure not forget. I hope throughout my life I'll succeed also um, to deal with them and manage them the right way. But it's tough. I say the Holocaust was all in black and white. We have no colorful pictures from there. So we had to imagine. These are colorful pictures. These are real scenes I saw. I do not need to imagine anymore. And it's terrible. Terrible. Seeing people coming out and they look like charcoals. You know, um, the two kids that come to me to the emergency uh, area we opened up, and they, they, the first thing they say, two little kids, nine and six, they say we're hungry. I told them, we should give you some food? They say, yeah, we didn't eat supper. My parents died. Our parents died. And, and then I tell them, okay, we'll give you. And they eat. And they're like always looking around. And it, it's something we cannot describe what's going through their head. And we asked them, where are you look? They're looking for their three-year-old daughter. Maybe she also got here. They thought she's dead. But they said, maybe. And to see this kind of stuff is not normal. Now, now to hear about these babies with their head cut off, 40 kids. These are stuff I never believed it could really be done. Why? 40 kids, why take them? Killing is terrible. Killing is terrible. Killing kids shouldn't be done anywhere. But Katar, tell, us, tell, us where, their head. tell us where you are right now and what is the exact situation? Because I can see a lot of relief supplies behind you. So can you exactly tell us what is the situation at your end right now? Yeah, right now I'm in my house in the Gaza Strip, about a kilometer and a half, about a mile from Gaza. Um, this house, basically, my family left uh, after we um, had refugees here and everything. It became like a base right now for supplies. In the back, there's a lot of food for the soldiers and clothes for for um, for uh, kids that need to come from Berry. And, and one second, okay. And and we have here um, all the medical supplies. That that's what I use if. People come in or if I get called out, um, this is basically, right now, this is where I'm living. Um, at night, I sleep on the roof and my friends too also with guns trying to um, look around and just protect us just to see that there's no movement. It's frightening to know that it could be that somebody's walking down in the streets looking to kill you. But can you also tell us, like you mentioned that there's so much chaos and there's so much terror out there, according to you. Can you also tell us what is the frequency, since you are a doctor and you are in relief work, what is the frequency of your requirement on ground? How often do you find yourselves leaving the house? Because you are talking to us right now, but I can see that you are always looking outside and trying to understand whether you're needed right now or not. So what is the frequency of the of your requirement outside? So it's it's it, it divides, okay, between medical and I do also all the rest. I'm also part of the security and also part of the trying to help here the elderly that are left behind and can't leave their homes and, and uh, special aid people. So it's basically all the time working. Medically, I get like um, once an hour a call that I need to come. Because... Did you hear that? Very strong one. Um, uh, so I get called all the time there, for- there, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is there bombing happening right now as we speak? Yeah, any every every maybe one. Can you show this to our viewers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Look, I'll say to you, um, this is my house. I live here, okay? And if you look right there, you could see maybe some smoke. You see the smoke? Maybe faintly, yes. So that is Gaza over there, okay? That's Gaza, uh, Gaza Strip. And there's all the time bombing. If we would see, if we wouldn't be daylight, you could have seen sometimes missiles going up in the sky, but then meeting our dome. I, I hope that stops it. If not, it goes and can kill people um, wherever they are. Um, it's like you sit here and you see everything. Okay, okay. And, you know, Natalia, I would like you to get seated again and, you know, uh, talk to yeah, us. Yeah. And, you know, I also wanted to ask this surprise attack by Hamas, you know, do you feel that this was a security failure or do you feel that this was an inevitable attack? Who, what, what do the Israeli people feel about it? Because this has never happened in a long time since the last Yom Kippur incident. I feel that this proved that the people, the Hamas, ISIS, the new ISIS, they, they, they finally, finally took off that costume, which we know is fake. And they, they, we found it that they're the new ISIS. They just want to kill us. Anticipation. It has nothing to do about ground. It has nothing to do about anything. It never. It's people that want to come and murder. There's a lot of good people in Gaza. A lot of good people. But there's bad uh, that, that is controlling there. Bad people. People that want to kill just because we're Jews. And they want to come and they don't care if it's babies. They don't care if it's a pregnant woman. They, for God's sake, just try to imagine they opened up a stomach of a pregnant woman and left her bleeding with the with the a fetal. Uh, in, these are stuff that are, are, I don't know, my heart was just now very, very shaky, like inside when I'm trying to describe it to you. It's stuff that are not, think about it. Try to imagine. I don't want any of you to to, to have such a situation ever, but just try to imagine a nine-year-old and a six-year-old going through what I told you before. Is that something that sounds to you in any circumstance normal? People coming and looking for it, just walking around, sniffing the, the, the ground, just trying, maybe they'll find their cousin, their mother, their kid. People are crying here on the road. I, I drive on the road and you see bodies on the road. You see, cars upside down. I'll send you media if you need. I'll send it all. You know, Gadaya, uh, since you mentioned about um, about footage, and you know, you've also been on the field. Have you been? Have you managed to you know capture any footage on your own? And if you have, can you take us through it? Can you tell us what exactly is happening in these footages? Yes, yes, I did. I I I saw the importance of taking it because in the first two days there was no press in the field. Nobody came. Nobody knew, or nobody was allowed. So I feel that I need to take those photos. Um, some of them are very, very bad. I don't think that they're for advertising there. It's not, people, maybe they are. People have to understand what, how bad it is. It's really pure, pure, pure trying to kill no matter what, to see blood. It's like as if they want to see blood. Can you, it's a, uh, can you tell us about can you tell us about what happens in the footage that you've taken? Can you tell us about the incident for our viewers? Yeah, so uh, as I'm driving in the under in the roads with the ambulance, you look out and you see cars upside down, you see carriages thrown on the road, you see bodies killed thrown on the road, um, you see blood, you see glasses, and then you continue and you see another car, then you continue and see another car that's all shattered with uh, uh, bullets yeah. and, and just goes on like that for another mile and another mile. And you see people crying. You, It's just crazy. And then you see the motorcycles of the Hamas um, that were thrown on the side. And you just see terror. You just see black smoke everywhere. It stinks outside. No, it's you stuff that it will not help me well, if you'll see the photos, maybe you'll understand a bit, a bit, but I can, I can no way it's very, describe to you how it's very distressing. And these are very distressing images that you're describing to us. 
So, Gadaria, you also mentioned something about Gaza. You mentioned that there are good people in Gaza, but they are also controlled by bad people. And, you know, the biggest question which comes around the world is what happens to the ties and the relationships between Jewish people and the Muslim people in, in Palestine? So, can you please tell me, like, you know, does this change the perspective on ground? Does this make two communities more hostile towards each other when such incidents happen? No. No. The, the Jews and the Muslims that were friends until now, I have, I have Muslim friends. I am a Jew. I am a from Jew. I, as a doctor, have colleagues that are Muslims. I, they're good friends. They're good people. That does not change. In Gaza, there is bad. People say humanity. Don't go. The purpose of Israel is not to kill Arabs. It's not to kill Muslims. It's not to kill Gaza. That is fake news. The purpose of us is to take out the bad from there and leave the good. Just like when you go to a dentist, you take out the bad, and he cleans it up, and then he puts in the good, and he leaves there only the good. That's what we need to do there. And when it will be done, maybe we could live good by good. The, the Middle East will look different. There is bad right over there. There are people that love blood. There are people that hate Jews. And that's all. And those people have to be um, taken down. And that takes war. And you back there in wherever you are, if it's France, London, um, Hindi, wherever you are, have to be on the side of Israel and let them do the job. It's for the benefit of the world. Everybody knows who were the ISIS. Everybody knows how the world looks when ISIS was exists and how it looks now when ISIS is already not worth anything. This is ISIS. You want the world to be better? This is the way to finish it. No, but, uh, yeah, it's but... better. It's better. I want it. This is important for me. It's not only for us. It's for the Gaza citizens. The Gaza citizens which come here and work also in my garden and also in my house and they're friends and I give them make coffee and we sit down for lunch together when they come. They don't have a good life, but they will have a better life if they let us do the job and let them live their own life and money will go to food, money will go to medication and will not go for building bombs. There's some strong views over there, Kadalia, and I appreciate that you're joining us at this difficult hour. And one final question I want to ask you before you leave. In this current time, how do you perceive the country around you amidst this whole situation? Look, the Israeli country is very strong. It was a big surprise, this attack. But it took very, very short time for everybody, citizens, soldiers, uh, politicians, whoever, to unite and become one. If I would just have the ability to show you what's going behind my house over here in terms of what we have over there, medical supplies, hygiene supplies, um, clothes, food. We, we build like a big market out of nothing, only donations. People come, there are soldiers out there crying and saying, please stop sending us food, socks, boxers, the order in, stop, we don't have room for it, we have too much. It, this is the Israeli community. This is the, when they're, the second somebody needs it, we become one. And all that news that always happens that there's big, um, uh, you know, different people that say this and that, and everybody's in the road. It's not, it's, it's one moment, but it's not what happens here all the time. All the time, there's something else. Beautiful stuff happened here. It's amazing. But it could be tons of times better if you let the Israeli army make a better Middle East. Thank you. Thank you, Nadalia, for joining us. And I really appreciate you taking the time. For more such updates, no. follow the print on all social media platforms. This is Munif Khan signing off. Thank you.